Hey guys, how's it going? Sneaky Jaffo up here, and today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 easy to use guns in Call of Duty. So I just quickly want to make note that this is not like uh, the top 5 newbiest guns or anything like that. Um, they're just sort of more guns for getting yourself out of like a rut. If you're having a bad game or something like that, they're just guns you can pick up and use quickly and easily and get yourself back in some form that I find. So first up, as you can see, we have the CUDA SMG. And this isn't an ordered list, but if I had to pick, I would probably say that this is probably my number one sort of easy to use gun. I can just pick it up at any time, even on any sort of map, even on a bigger map. You can get it close range with people, even medium range. You can usually win most gunfights with this gun. It's got good damage, good rate of fire, good nice low recoil, and actually really good iron sights. And I think uh, the developers did a really good job making this one of the first guns that you can sort of start out with. Uh, sort of introduces people to the SMG class and the Black Ops 3 guns really well and it's easy to pick up and use. And to be honest, the simpler the better with this gun I find. I pretty much just run a foregrip and a quick draw grip as I mentioned in my CUDA favourite class setup video. So next up here we have the ICR and I find this is sort of very similar to the CUDA in the fact that it's quite a steady gun, especially with the foregrip. I would sort of liken this to being like an assault rifle version of the CUDA, just with a bit better range but lower damage and a little bit slower firing. And that's what makes it such a nice, easy gun to use. You can just pick it up, and as long as you're not trying to get up in people's faces too much, where a CUDA should be used, you should be able to pick your targets off with ease. Another great thing about this gun that makes it so easy to use is the iron sights. I personally usually run optics on this gun, but you definitely don't need to do that. Um, that allows you to sort of free up an extra slot to put an extra attachment on it, therefore making the gun even easier to use say a long barrel which bumps the range out on this gun a fair bit and makes it a bit of a killing machine on long long sided maps. I will be doing a favourite class setup for the ICR soon but pretty much uh, to get myself out of like a bit of a, a death streak or something when I use this gun you do have to play a little bit more campy but it's sort of necessary and it plays into the gun strengths if you can pick your targets off from those long lines of sight and just sort of avoid them in close ranges altogether because I feel like that's kind of the main downfall of this weapon is if you get in mid to close ranges it, it can lose a lot of gunfights to things like the CUDA <laughs> that shoot faster and have a bit more damage. So next up we have the KN44 assault rifle and I've already done a favorite class setup for this gun as well so if you'd like to go check that out feel free to do so but I'll explain a bit about how I like to use the gun here as well. So as I explained in my favorite class setup I pretty much just like to use this gun with a suppressor in a foregrip or a quick draw grip or something, just keep it low on attachments. But with the suppressor and the iron sights usually, just because it has the lowest uh, range reduction penalty when using a suppressor. But as you can see here, I'm not doing that at all. I'm using a red dot sight and a grip, I think, and no suppressor. But this gun is really strong this way and it's a lot simpler to use. As long as you don't mind showing up on the radar a bit, this gun can kill very fast from most ranges with this setup. So the next one I'm going to move on to probably by most people's standards isn't the easiest to use gun and that's the HVK30 but I find personally um, I like the fact that it's strong at close range and strong at med medium ranges and if you can control that recoil it can be pretty strong at those longer ranges too but as I said it's quite a subjective sort of list so that's sort of why you may not agree with this opinion but as I said in my favorite class setup video for this gun I think keeping it lower on attachments is good too, so I usually run it with a quick draw and a foregrip and sometimes a red dot, but when I'm playing close range maps I don't find I need the red dot as much so I'll usually just take that off and chuck on an extra tactical grenade or, or a perk or something. But if you're playing on those maps that have some longer lines of sight like Hunted or Stronghold, I usually chuck a red dot on it then and that way I can sort of pick people off head glitches a bit easier I find. And as long as you sort of pepper the trigger and don't hold it down full auto all the time, you can control the recoil in this gun quite comfortably, I think. Not to mention the fact that if you put a long barrel on this thing, it will really tear through people at longer ranges too. But as I said at the start, I understand that not everyone's going to think that this is an easy to use gun um, by any sense of the word, but I find it's one that I can sort of just go to and it's sort of an all-round good gun that gets me out of sort of sticky situations when I'm, I'm having a bad day. And for the last gun, I thought I'd steer away from the full auto guns a bit, so I've put in the M8A7. Obviously, it's between that and the XR2, but I just find, um, sort of, out of the box, the M8A7 is just a bit easier and user-friendly. Uh, this is another gun that I haven't done a favourite class setup on, but I will be doing that soon. But pretty much, the way I like to run it, the way I've been running it lately, is just with a red dot, long barrel, and rapid fire. 
But if you don't have those attachments unlocked, I'd pretty much just put a quick draw grip and a foregrip maybe on it. Although if you don't find you need the foregrip, which I usually don't, I would chuck something like high caliber on it because without the foregrip, it can kick up a little bit and you get a lot more unburst headshots, which is pretty nice. And the thing I like about this gun and what I think makes it a bit easier to use than say the XR2 is the sort of rate of fire of the burst. Not only is the burst of the four bullets a little bit faster, but also the delay between bursts is a little bit faster, which makes it really nice. And you can kind of get a bit closer and, and a bit more aggressive with the gun, which I like too. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and a bit of an in-depth of the sort of guns that help save my ass when I'm struggling. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, even subscribe. And until next time, cheers.